Remember when back in the day, you'd just go up and turn on that old black and white TV? And not to your surprise, you'd get an image. You'd have a nice time watching a video, and well, it'd be really nice if it were still around today. And you know, a lot of people respected these old black and white TVs for what they were. And they were good at doing their job. Well, back when analog TV was in existence. But now with the abolishment of analog TV, all we get is static. Ugh. I want my TV work. And well, people might say it's useless, but today I'm gonna go over and use a black and white TV in 2023. Looking at this one, it's quite luggable, and well, it's one of the ones that they produce very cheap. Mine has an AC power input, but DC input, composite input, AV switch, and those three potentiometers for contrast, brightness, and vertical hold. Now, having an AC input in composite jacks on these black and white TVs aren't that common because other ones only have the DC jack and the RF jack. However, though, I don't care because, well, the AC transformer that's built in buzzes and sometimes flickers. It has a very cheap tuning system as well. It has dials for FM, AM. VHF low, VHF high, and, of course, UHF. Now, UHF only goes to channels until 60, 69 in this case. But actually, the dial lies. It goes way above 69 in UHF channels. Also, the FM tuner isn't accurate because they used the FM method for how they used it back in the USA and maybe in Japan. I don't know. However, though, it's only got a speaker from the left, and those vents on the front, they're fake. It has an extendable aerial. Sorry that that, they, that, got, that didn't get caught the, on the camera. Sorry, I'm stuttering. But yeah, those cheap black and white TVs, that's how they made them. And you know, you'd find them in your local store for around like 30 or 40 euros, because by the way, I live in Europe. Big shock. But still, though, it's pretty nice to have a working example today. I found this at an old vacation house where it was abandoned, sitting there for years. However, though, there's plenty of switches on it. It like the volume switch, an earphone jack, and a switch between radio, TV. It also has a switch built in for FM, AM, VHF, and VHF high. So because the AC power jack is buzzing, I always use my wall ward, which is, of course, 12 volts, the exact voltage needed for this TV. Anyways, let's go and plug in that DC power jack into the input of the TV. Of course, that wall ward isn't plugged in yet. I'll plug it in later in the video. But anyways, I just thought I'd document this on camera just for, just for the views. I put back in that aerial, well, because it was getting out, and finally, I plugged in that DC jack. Boom. However, because RF is dead, there's one more thing we need to, we need to do. And where? We need that composite jack. Thankfully, I had a PS3, which was, of course, set the composite video. So that's what we're going to be using today in the video. And really, plugging in composite cables is quite common, but because this TV only has mono audio, one cable, unfortunately, is going to be left dangling. And the weird thing is, it doesn't use the right channel as audio. It actually uses the left channel. So that right channel... We'll just have to sit dangling lonely. Oof. Anyways, time to get that DC wall wart plugged in. Boom. 
I also plugged in the composite jacks and time to turn it on. I already had it set on AV mode. I turned up the volume a slight bit and finally I turned on that PS3. Ah, oh, that startup chime never gets old for me. It's because a lot of my childhood, I used a PS3. Desp despite me not owning one, I actually owned a Wii. I had it set on the 20th anniversary theme, so yeah, no, no crazy stuff. I decided to go to YouTube to play back some of my videos. I kind of turned down the volume because this thing's very sensitive with volume. I think I need to replace some caps in it, but I don't have any soldering experience. Anyways, there's YouTube. I already had this thing set up with my internet anyways. Classic. So as I waited for YouTube to load, I thought about some other stuff I could do with this TV. But in the meantime, let me just show you how this works. So I just searched up my channel, which frankly was already a pre-loaded search for me. So yeah, I'm just emulating some controls until finally I go into my channel and that way you guys can see my previous video. Hey guys. Archive this page on the Wayback Machine if you want. Yeah, there's some FPS lag. I don't know why. But later on, that got ironed out, and well, I was watching YouTube on my channel in a black and white TV. Frankly, I just find it mind-blowing. This is my last video when I restored a keyboard. So, yeah, I activated captions, despite you not being able to read. Because for some reason, my camera wouldn't focus. I turned off my TV and decided to demo also the radio capabilities. It has a decent tuner, but I really wish it had a digital tuner. But well, you get what you pay for. I forgot to mention also that on the bottom there, there wasn't. So after all that, I decided to turn off the TV and the radio and just clean up. I also put the volume jack back to normal. Anyways, I hope you like watching this video. And well, it's been really interesting. Using CRTs like this can save you a lot of money than buying just a new TV. Generally, CRTs can be very reliable and can last up to 20 years, unlike newer TVs that can only last around five years. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and put that notification bell.